I wonder what game should win uh, game of the year this year. I where's, mean, my, where's my BB? Where's your BB, BB? Weird. I don't think Death Stranding should win because I think it's too too great. It's over. <clears throat> it's over. It's underrated, actually. Uh, underrated. It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does this whenever it's told. Mister, my family will pay cash. I feel like if it won Game of the Year, it would be um un. It would be, it would, it would be bad. It would be very bad. Uh we love you, Kojima. <laughs> win. Call us, please. <laughs> Okay, guys, enough silliness. Oh, I've never actually grabbed this thing. Don't grab the baby, Sam. It's very weird. Maybe we should eat it. Sam's never seen Rick and Morty because he sucks. I have not watched it yet. Maybe that's some good movie. Pickle Rick! Okay, anyway, guys, we're back. We were in London for a week, shilling for Xbox. Yeah. Didn't do a very good <laughs> job, though, Wearing unfortunately. A PlayStation merch. We were. <laughs> the whole time, actually. Whole time. We weren't People even, were... like, thinking. We, I mean, me, I was waking up, like, a tie in the morning. I'm like, oh, this'll do. Anyway, whatever. That's what we did. Got so, all, uh, all speaking of Xbox, uh, they had a great showing at the Game of the Year nominations this year. I think a total of zero Xbox games. Yeah, <laughs> guess what? Was that actually Gears nominated? Was on it? Yeah, somewhere. Okay, I did see that. Buried <laughs> beneath somewhere it was in there. So anyway, look, Game of the Year nominations have came out. Come out? Come out from came out. Uh, the Game Awards run by Jeff Keighley. Uh, it's a pretty good list overall, but there's definitely some stuff that's missing and some stuff that like was like, what the fuck? Why yeah. is that on there? Uh, the internet is, of course, angry because why wouldn't they be? And so we're here to serve you up a nice little distilled version. We're going to tell an, you. An anger digest. Served directly to you, ladies and gentlemen. Where the hell's Anthem? We'll talk about that after the break. After the break. Is that what we're calling it now? We're calling Is it a break. It, uh, we should just put advertisement where we yeah, would yeah, usually sure. do our so, job. Subway, eat fresh. That's a good idea. So, uh, the Game Awards is the night of nights for video games. It used to be a pretty crappy event, but Jeff Keighley has invested heavily in it mm. and, like, wrangled sponsors. And now it's, like, the Oscars of video games. Yeah. It's a really professional event. And huge shout-out to Jeff Keighley sure. for, like, the work that he's done with that. Definitely. I'd also like to remind everyone that Jeff Keighley isn't the one that decides who wins. There's, like, all these memes circulating that Jeff Keighley will just, like, give it to Kojima. Oh, yeah. I don't know where those memes came from. That's terrible. Me neither. But, like, the but it's just to be super clear, the way it works is that about 70 or 80 media publications like say who should be nominated for this award where's the youtubers for that and okay. then a part of the vote goes to you uh to the like you know players or whatever anyone can vote you just log into their website and vote and another component of the vote is actually like you know the media representatives so it's it's industry plus also like general plebs mm -hmm. and um that's how it works it's not like jeff being like Kojima wins all the awards. Well, I was gonna say, I mean, where's the YouTubers in that, people? Okay, I expect Layman to be like, yeah, I think Anthem should win. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest meme of See, that's category. the thing, if I was on there, I'd just meme it. So I'm I sure. get it. I understand why the YouTubers are not there. But look, there's a lot it. of categories, everybody. Okay? There there's a hell of a lot of categories. I was looking through like, oh my god, shit, okay, wow. Like, oh, 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 that's the best esports oh, 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 moment, there's best Woke game. <laughs> no. Best woke game is actually a thing, by best, the way. Best woke we're not game. making that up. That's we'll a true thing. There. We'll get Okay, so where do we start? We'll okay. get to game of the year at the end. Yeah, where do we okay. start? Let's start with score because I think this is an interesting one. Okay, so in this category, you had Cadence of Hyrule, Death Stranding, Devil May Cry 5, Kingdom Hearts 3, and Sayonara Wild Hearts. Mm -hmm. Sayonara, I haven't actually played because. Cadence of Hyrule? Cadence of Hyrule is that game where it's like a, a rhythm game where you have to yeah. move to the beat and it's to Zelda music. Really? Really cool soundtrack, oh, actually. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I Death... thought that was, um, um, what's it called? The uh, Link's Awakening, but sadly. Oh, yeah, right. not. Death Stranding, uh, personally, I feel That's like. That's it. It has to be. I'd be really stunned if this game just invests so much in its soundtrack. It's nuts. Uh, the other thing, though, that is quite interesting and what everyone's talking about for this is that there's no Shadowbringers in this. Now, if anyone has played Shadowbringers, Final Fantasy XIV expansion, mm. you immediately know that it has won this category. It's impossible for any other fucking game to mm. win this category other than that. I wonder if you've played, if you've like played that game. I wonder it didn't win because it's already a game that's been out for a number of years and it's like maybe. a DLC thing. I mean, I maybe that the music be in that game is just beyond mind blowing. But look, with Death Stranding, I definitely think it's the one because sure. and it was definitely May Cry Five and Kingdom Hearts. Now, I I, I didn't play um, Death May Cry, but I have played uh, Kingdom Hearts now. 
Death Stranding, like, it's just so beautifully put together. Like, every moment, you, you just... It, it's just, for me, it's the game that did m music the best this year. The next category is actually the woke category that ah, we spoke about earlier. Games for Impact, This is called everybody. Games for Impact. Quote, for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or oh, message. Oh, good. Here we go. It's like, which game virtue signaled the most? That's what we'd <laughs> like to know. I think this is a garbage category, what to be honest with you. What is this category, guys? I'm genuinely, uh, like... I don't know what that means. I, I don't, you know, I don't believe like... we should be awarding games for like oh having a message like if a game wants to have a message cool if it doesn't that's fine like i don't understand why we need a category to do this oh, and such... i'm really and i'm really pro games doing this by the way like i love when games say things like i'm all for that but like do we need a fucking award to be like yes y y you had a post yeah. po positive message have, i think have a cookie yeah i think it should be more like you know best storytelling best narrative yeah put that and that's you know I mean? it you know like this whole like yeah the the work olympics and not not interested in it to be honest <laughs> but look whatever uh, I don't know. What are the games anyway? Uh, look, it doesn't really matter. The, the, the most important one is Gris. It's the best game on there. Go and play Gris. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Okay, so next up, narrative. So we do get to narrative. Let's okay. go through the list first. A Plague's Tale Innocence, Control, Death Stranding, Disco Elysium, and The Outer Worlds. I played four out of five of these games. Yeah, I played... Yeah, four out of five. Oh, no. I played um, three out of five of these ones. Which have you not played? Uh, Disco Elysium and the first one. You haven't played Plague Tale? No. Okay, fair enough. So, Control, I mean, it felt fine. Um, I thought it was a semi-interesting thing that kept me... Uh, uh, you know, interested for 15, 20 hours. I think hours anyone that says that this game had a good narrative is having a massive fucking laugh. No. This game has fantastic world building. It's got a great world, but like narrative is something very different to that. Narrative is like the story that you are telling, and this game told a boring story. You like, might think that. No, 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 no. I, I, oh, I, I really objectively, would love, it is I would right. love to sit down with anyone that uh, that would love to tell me, oh, the story in it, it's amazing. No, the world building, I agree, is amazing. The story itself kind of blows. Look, it might have been a shitty payoff, but like, look, very. I think. Payoff. You know, the game itself, I think it kept, if it keeps you captivated with the story and wanting you to move to the next beat because you do want to know more, then I think it's a job well done in some respects. And I was playing that and thinking, this has got me intrigued. You know, the actual world was great, but the story itself made me want to move to the next, you know, part of the story. But look, I think Death Stranding is an interesting one because while I really liked the narrative, I definitely can see that it had lots of issues with it. I don't think it win deserves to win this category. Yeah. Like, I think Kojima's narratives are a really good example as well. Fantastic world building, really kind of like struggle to deliver on the this point, then that point, then that point, then boom. The, with the exception of the mad storyline, which I won't spoil, that was perfection. Everything else is a bit muddled. The mad. Oh, yes, yeah, I see yeah, what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> Mads. Yeah, of course. Well, that's just spoiling it there. But anyway, yeah, I know what you're saying with Death Stranding. I do think that it, again, it kept me very interested. I really wanted to know more. But you're right. It was more about the world. I wanted the story to tell yeah. me more about the world itself. For sure. So in that regard, I would be surprised if that won. But then Outer Worlds, yeah, it felt fine. It was fine. I actually really thought the writing was quite tight. But again, like the overall narrative, I thought wasn't the best. But mm. moment to moment writing and characters were cool. Disco Elysium is one that every single person I've spoken oh, yes. to is saying that this is the best. I haven't played, it, haven't yet. played it yet. This is on my list of things to play in the next few weeks before the end of the year. Sure. But everyone is frothing this game so hard, especially its writing, especially its narrative. I'd be surprised if it doesn't win based upon those Based sorts on of that we sterling. haven't played it, but it's gonna no, win, no, baby. Based upon no, the consensus, yeah, yeah. I'd be surprised if that <laughs> yeah. didn't win. Shut up, Sam. All right, so ongoing game is next. This is a bit of a strange category. First of all, they've got Apex Legends, Destiny 2. I think it's a good category, though. Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, it's one thing to bring out a game and it might sell well or whatever. It's another thing to like slog it out and keep it popular, keep it relevant. And I think that all these games are still relevant. And you know, yeah. some of them are years on. Some of them had to be you know built from the ground up. I think it's really like... easy to remove a few games from this. So for example, I do not believe Destiny 2 should be in this. Because like I feel like its latest expansion was fine, but it wasn't amazing. I feel like they've done a lot of back-end work to get this thing on like Steam, on Stadia. Yeah. Like, Etc. Uh, but like, I don't feel like need like I don't feel like Destiny is is sort of like really. I don't think it's had its best year this year. That's my view. And look, it might That's have not view. had its best year, but I think it's uh, had a, a a giant story to it. You know, in terms of being with Activision, getting away from it, going free to play, and all these people coming along with the journey. And then we've had good highs and lows with Destiny, but it is still relevant. So I do think that it actually deserves a place here, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, it may be a place, but I don't think it holds a candle to a lot of the others. I think Apex Legends as well, I feel like... It burned it's, very it's, bright at the beginning. Exactly, it just hasn't maintained the momentum that mm. Fortnite has. It had that disastrous event, like where they just, ch the Iron Crown yes. event or whatever, where they just charged through the ass yes. for everything. I feel like if you're gonna, if a Battle Royale game is gonna win this category, it's gonna be Fortnite, especially given how massive that 
Fortnite Chapter 2 mm. event was and how well that went sure. down. I feel like Rainbow Six Siege has continued to grow and thrive and just has it's this incredible strong, community. It's a smaller culture though, isn't it? Like, oh, it's very, yeah. very niche. Far yeah, more yeah, than the yeah, other yeah. ones. But yeah. it, the players that play it love it and respect it so much. I do feel as though of, of this year, the, the, the new content drops that we saw, Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers was so astounding. Like it was just the best MMO expansion I've ever played. Mm. And uh, I feel like, yeah, it, so it's such a hard category to really say who should win. But I'd say probably something like Fortnite for how well it's done in terms yeah. of maintaining its relevance. And I would say Shadowbringers Final Fantasy just for how meaningful and how awesome that content is. It's hard was. to know what the metrics are, you yeah. know? Like, I mean, is it how relevant it is? Is it how many people are playing? Or is it really like, you know, what is the content that you've been contributing this last year to that game that's kept it brilliant? I don't know, but Fortnite, I would say in terms of the masses though, it probably has the sure. best shot. It's definitely going to get all the votes from the kids. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, so who knows? There's also also, uh, next up is content creator uh, category. Now, whoa, 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 I'm whoa, whoa, whoa. very what? disappointed that the laymen are not I mean, here. skill up, it's... no, fine. But, but like, at least the layman. At on, least man. the layman. The layman memes. What so, the fuck? so I would say that I only know a few of the people on this list, and I know that's a bit like okay, boomer. But like, I don't know all these people. I'm assuming very they, well then. Fossil. If I don't know them, I'm assuming they play for lots of Fortnite on Twitch. Like, yep. okay, that's yep. essentially yep. it. Yep. 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 But like, cool. It just seems weird that you don't have like I don't know where any of these people actually. YouTubers? I, I don't know, but look, I mean, I I'm not trying so. to dunk on them. If they're really successful, like, good on them, you know, whatever. But I, there are I, some really awesome YouTube content creators the out thing. there. I think there's some really awesome, interesting people that put like Scott the Woz, girlfriend Internet reviews, historian, Nakey Jakey, uh, Dunky, Internet historian, uh, Dunky man, like, come like, on. I feel like there's some really top tier YouTubers sure. making incredible content. Like even Jim Sterling, sure. with his commentary, old mate Yong, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, definitely I, not inside gaming though. Duh, screw Fuck those, those guys. We screw hate inside dudes. gaming. No, but like you're right. There are so many people in the gaming industry that are contributing that I think deserve a place. Now, I mean, is five and uh, five people enough? Probably. Like, there's so many people out there that are contributing to the space. I kind of think like just get rid of this category. Like it's <laughs> it's so hard to put five people there that you think deserve a nomination. Sure. Do you know what I'm saying? Like sure. anyway, whatever. And then we go to the next one. So the next category is game direction, and this is quite analogous to like game of the year. We've got control. Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro, and Outer Wilds. Mm. Now, oh, Outer Wilds got a place. Yeah, okay. So One. I don't think you can say Outer Wilds for game direction, funnily enough, because uh, I think direction is about like, I think it's about how you're positioning things and, and really sort of specifically curating your experience. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think Outer Wilds is strong because of its like core design pillars and they built this like systemic universe that operates like a clock, right? So I feel and like it's a sandbox too, right? You can just go out there and figure yeah, out Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I don't necessarily think direction is the strength of that game. I would say that's quite different to, I think, the other four games in this category, which I do think actually have quite strong direction. Sure. I, I don't know who I would give this to here with this. Resident Evil really 2 tough. was a really brilliant like game to come out and be like, you know what, guys? We are making a remake and we deserve Game of the Year. Like yeah. It was so fantastic and I hope it sets a precedent that it does, does win some awards because it deserves it. I do think with game direction, like it was just so brilliantly done. Death it Stranding. was so, no, no, oh, Resident Evil 2. All oh, right, my brain always just goes to Destiny. Yeah, of course, Kojima fan. <clears throat> no, but I think that the, the way that it was actually kind of presented, like it was just so evenly paced. I just really I loved Resident Evil 2. And I think uh -huh. the game direction, the world that it created and the, and the way it told that story was was fantastic. I totally agree with that. You know? yeah, I really with Death Stranding, I think it was a really fantastic game, but it did have its, you know, ebbs and, uh, and highs and lows, you know? And some people didn't stick around for those lows. And I think that's probably one of the, you know, drawbacks of that game. For sure. Where it was really heavily reliant on a, on a gameplay loop. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't paced all the time correctly. Yep, I agree. I guess this really brings us to the game of the year category, yep. which, okay, let's go through the nominees first. We've got uh, Control, we've got Death Stranding, we've got Resident Evil, we've got Sekiro, and we've got Smash Bros. Oh, Ultimate, yeah. and we've got Outer Worlds, okay? okay? Now, I would say, first of all, the big game that I think a lot of people are really pissed off that this is not here is Devil May Cry 5. Uh, a lot of people are super mm. upset about that because uh, I'd say a good 30% of people that I speak to are like Devil May Cry 5 was my game of the year. Sure. I'm legitimately surprised that it is not here on mm. this list of games because of that level of reception. I'm surprised that Smash is there, but I'm glad it's there because no, I'm not surprised Smash is no, there. No, because the thing is, a lot of people were like, oh, it came out in 2018, man. 
man. It doesn't matter. It didn't get, you know, it's yeah, it time for the awards in the game awards. Sure. Exactly. So I'm glad it's there because I do think it's one of the greatest games ever created. I put like too many hours into that thing since it's start. It's since it's uh, you know been released, and I just think it is a superb game for sure. on all fronts. And I do think that you know out of this uh, selection, they're all brilliant games. But I guess my love for Smash, I'd love to see it win because I do think it's such a triumph. But having said that, you know, Sekiro was fantastic. It was hard as hell. I couldn't even finish it. It was so hard. <laughs> but I loved it, you know. And then Resident Evil 2, again, like this, you know, uh, uh, okay, everything apart from Control, really. <laughs> no, I would say uh, even Outer Worlds. I would actually remove Outer Worlds from this very comfortably. Oh, and really? I, I, as someone who okay. really enjoyed Outer Worlds, yeah. it's not a game of the year, man. I'm sorry, but like, it's it's not. I enjoyed like, what I played. I enjoyed but... what I played, but it's there's these other games here are pretty fucking phenomenal. Mm. And, and Outer Worlds is just a really solid game, you know, in, in particular, like it really breaks down at the end with its RPG design, mm. where it just becomes super cakewalky to do everything. It is quite small and contained, which is fine, but a lot of people wanted a lot more, uh -huh. uh, etc. So it's got its problems, and I don't think other these other games have problems in the same way. Control as well, I would very easily strike yeah, off this yeah, list. Yeah, I, mean, like I think it was fine, but it wasn't like Game correct, of the Nintendo. Correct. I do think it's going to be between probably Death Stranding, Sekiro, and Smash. I don't know if Resident Evil 2 will win, because oh, yeah. I, I loved it, don't get me wrong. Wrong, but I just feel like I don't know there uh, there's something about it that I feel like compared to these other games there's such a huge like love for Sekiro all these people are crying out for, for sure. Sekiro to win Death Stranding also has their Kojima fans and I don't think Death Stranding is going to win given how divisive it's been I, I really I, don't I, I don't think it's going to get the critical award I don't think it's going to get the popular award so I think you can count it out uh, and I think, yeah, I, I personally think it's going to be Smash I think it's going to be Smash. I hope it's going to be Smash because I love Smash so much. But we'll have to see. We're probably going to do it live, actually, everybody. Yeah. So look, until if, if then... If the time lines up. If so. the time lines up. If it's like 3 in the morning, we'll do it anyway. The other thing <laughs> is that game miss, that's missing here is Outer Wilds. Not the Outer Worlds, the Outer Wilds. Yeah. Which, if anyone's played it, like, it's the game of the year, man. I don't fucking care what anyone says. I'll mm. fight anyone that disagrees. Like, that game is utterly remarkable. And it is the most important game released in 2019 in terms of its game design. But, but we'll anyway. have to see, guys. Our battery's about to die. It We're is. That's it right why he's now. wrapping it up. I'm trying to wrap it up, but like, I, I think it's going to be Super Smash Brothers. I love you all. Appreciate you. We'll be back tomorrow with, oh, Pokemon review. And also, I we're about Stadia. fucking hated Pokemon. Okay, we've got a lot of stuff. And then we'll do Lemon Live on Saturday. There's a whole... We're back, baby. We're back. Okay? Love you. Appreciate you. Yong out. <laughs>